I can't speak my native language. You might think that's just a cop-out, and that it's not that I can't speak my native language, but I'm just too lazy to learn it. And if you think that, I know we can never be friends. And your parents are siblings. Here's a summary of my situation. I am the child of immigrants. And that basically means I had to learn how to code switch between English speakers in my immigrant community. But if you thought that was it, then you'd be wrong. Because not only did I have to code switch between English people in my native country, but I also had to differentiate between the two separate languages my family spoke on top of English. So I didn't just need to learn two different languages. I really had to learn three. To be fair, the two foreign languages happened to use a similar alphabet system. So when learning one, it was technically easier to learn the other. But that doesn't mean it still wasn't a whole different language. If you can speak Spanish, then does that mean that you can speak Italian? Why not? The alphabets are practically the same. Sounds like a skill issue to me, buddy. And you know what the worst part was? If I tried to talk in either of the languages to a native speaker, I would inevitably mix up words from the other language, which would end up being interpreted as just plain gibberish to the person I tried to talk to, because of course the person I was talking to was fluent in one of the languages, but doesn't know a single word in the other one because they were born 200 kilometers away from the region that spoke it. This always put me in a lose-lose situation growing up. If there was a community event with people who spoke one of the languages, I wouldn't talk, because I'd risk saying things in the other language and humiliate myself. And if I responded in English, they just assumed I didn't understand them, and of course their English was weak because they only spoke their native language at home. This happens way too often. So often, that I get into a situation where an older person talks to me in their native language and I don't talk back fast enough because I can't process what they say in time. So they reply in their native language. But that's the thing I understood perfectly. Now, English speakers won't understand this, but for immigrants, having a child able to speak their native language gives parents a new level of bragging rights. I remember one time at a wedding, a friend of my dad's, whom I had never met before, came up to me and talked in his native language. But I couldn't understand him because he had an accent that I wasn't familiar with and admittedly spoke in the language I had the lowest comprehension in. When I had to eventually admit I couldn't understand him, he smiled, looked me in the eyes and told me, your dad's biggest failure was not teaching you your native language. And the worst part was, I didn't know what he said. So I had to ask my dad to translate it for me. And when I realized what he said, I was livid. This guy, who may I remind you, I had never met before. I literally just met him for the first time. He had the gall, the audacity, to insult me and my family over something as stupid as speaking a language. I don't care how close of a friend he was to my dad, and whether this was just banter between them. I didn't appreciate it. And what annoys me the most is how normalized it is to rank immigrant children based on how much they know about their native culture. Now, I hate to break it to you immigrant parents, but you chose to abandon your country to pursue something better in the West. Don't try to push your cultures and traditions on your children and expect them to willfully accept everything you do after you willingly chose to leave it all behind. And parents, what's the deal with your immigrant expectations? My child must become one of three things, a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer. What are those options? There are so many other career paths available for people who do well in school. Forcing your kids down the three most labor-intensive directions for you, just so you can get some lame bragging rights at the community weddings, is the dumbest thing you could do as a parent. By the way, I picked becoming an engineer. To all the kids watching, do well in school. That's one of the few things immigrant parents get right. Because if you don't get the graduation certificate, not only do you have to try to get a job as an immigrant, which is not fun, but you also have to get a job as a dropout you're going to be in fast food for life or homeless. What immigrant parents fail to realize, though, is that if you force your kids down a career path that they aren't passionate about, then they're just going to fail, and it's not their fault. It's yours as a parent who didn't listen and thought you knew better when you really didn't. Immigrant parents are the first to complain about how their lives were so difficult when they were younger, and that things are so much easier for you as their child. And sure, some things were different back then. They had to wrestle lions and hyenas on their 100km walks to school every single day. But that doesn't mean that your kids' struggles aren't just as meaningful. I was bullied in middle school, and I didn't tell my parents about it, because I know my father didn't get the opportunity to go to school as a kid, since he was wrongfully taken in as a war prisoner at the age of 12, and didn't get out until he was in his 20s. Then he had to escape his warring country by running through the jungle for 22 days into Kenya. Like, what the hell? How can you tell someone people are mocking you during lunch breaks at school, calling you bad words which made you feel sad, after hearing that tragic backstory? How many of you got called racist jokes at school? Put your hands up, this is a safe space, let me see. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you tell your parents about it? No. Then they didn't know. Aha. Uh -huh. So you didn't know better, parents. Because I didn't tell you I was being bullied for being a pathetic black loser every day and returned home to be told to study if I didn't want to become a pathetic black loser in the future. So I just had to stick through it. Focus on studying. Because I convinced myself that was the only way I could get out of my pathetic situation. And I did well in school because of it. Did it stop the bullying? Eh, not really. All it did was turn me into the class nerd. And I just had to grow out of being antisocial the hard way. By watching anime on the weekends and playing handball at lunch. I am totally social today. But let's be real. Immigrant parents push all of these high expectations onto their kids because it's literally the only thing they know they can do which is best for you. They are terrified to see you suffer through the things they had to go through. My dad's life story is absolutely tragic. And the worst part of it is, it's not even that unique. So many people from Africa and the Middle East and Asia have had to go through the worst possible upbringings, the worst possible lives to escape into a first world country just for the hope that they can make their kids live a better life life. They care so much that they're willing to sacrifice their own potential futures in a first world country to make sure that their kids can get through schooling with the best highest quality education they can come up with. If that's not love, I don't know what is. And the fact that I was so blinded to it for so many years in my life is such a great shame that I still regret today. I should have been completely open with my parents back when I was being bullied, telling them what was happening and how I felt. Because of course they would have cared for me. What? That's the whole reason why they came here. So that I could be happy. And no matter how much the immigrant parents pressure annoyed me, it got me into university. It got me to excel in my subjects. And that's something I need to thank them for. I mean, I'm not going to thank them in person, that, that'd be cringe, but yeah. I remember a situation where one of my Indian friends was panicking because he got a beginner senior maths exam and dreaded the inevitable conversation with his parents. I, as a fellow immigrant, could really feel his pain, so I gave him the best advice I could at the time. I told him to confront his parents, tell them that he was not studying hard in school for their sake, but for his sake, and that he was trying his very best. Because that's all immigrant parents want from their kids, to try their best. We aren't some trophies for our parents to brag about in their community events. We are people, living the lives that parents couldn't have. So we do need to listen to them, to work hard and succeed so that they can succeed with us. But we also need support. We struggle sometimes and have lows. We need to also ask them for support in those situations as well. My friend thanked me later for the advice that I told him. It gave him the courage to stand up to his parents, and from what I heard, it went well. That friend is now studying engineering, doing his masters in electrical engineering. And the best thing about it is, he's doing what he wants to, for himself. And good for him. I know a lot of us have funny stories about being immigrant children. If you want, go ahead and comment them. I do read the comments, sometimes to my own detriment. If you enjoyed my story, please like and subscribe. I know, this is a cue to leave, but let me just say one thing. Thank you for listening to my story. I appreciate it. Okay, bye.